was developing my React Native app, then when I reached the step of adding the augmented reality feature in the app, I got the idea of using React, Na React Native with Unity. Like is known, there are two major ways of adding Unity to your React Native app. The first method is Unity as library, where you need to compile your Unity game as a native library, then add it to your na React Native native folders. This, this task is tedious, complex, and need a lot of work. But the second way is the deep link. That is straightforward, easy, even if you add the steps that the customer needs to download the second app, but I find it intuitive and very fast in implementing. So now, so here, like you see in this button, if I click on it, but before let's go out and like you see there is in the left the react native app already an api file registered in my iphone and in the right my unity ios game so here we return to the app when we click in uh, view in ar it will launch the game automatically and the game is an ar core for ios and I use this feature because I am proficient with Unity. And with the same code base of Unity, I can develop for Android and iOS. Right now, I don't have a Samsung Android. So I can show you in the, in the Android version. But I already have the logic with uh, tested with another app. So in further in the tutorial, I will show you everything. So now, first of all, let's jump to the unity editor so i can show you how i build my game so let's go so there is the unity editor like you see there is the scene for my ar setup i will show you the settings like here we go to project settings all here under the xr in the ios you need to check this apple ar kit and the Google AR core for the Android. The problem that got me in Android is you need to have an Android level of minimum 10. But my current device only have the Android version 9. So there is a mis mismatch of version. But no need to deep, deep dive in the AR subject. Let's stay in the deep link logic. Then we go to the player and we go in the other settings we go to the ar schemes right here first of all you will find that the size is zero but you can increment with number phone for my kids because my game only have one scene no need to have multiple ur scheme so we add the number of how many elements you want and there is the elements I have and I give it the Wayfinder 3D double quote double slash and you must know that this it will be added in the info playlist and it will make the application exposable so in the OS every every UAR that has this UAR scheme it will point to the app and open it if it's already registered if it's not you can have a custom logic or Automatically, it will show the URL link in the App Store. We we build here in build profile. By the way, I am in Unity 6 for everyone wondering the version. So here, there is only scene. Then we will build. After you build the game, let's go to Xcode, the build folder that I append in its version. Let's go to the Xcode project, like here. There is Xcode, Unity iPhone in the info playlist. You will look for the UAR. There is the current UAR scheme. This is different. I will tell you why. Just the UAR type, you will find this here. The schemes, so there is it. You choose your device and you press build. And you will download your game, your Unity game, in your real device. So this steps is 
already explained. Let's close the project. No, this is the game that I will explain you for the concepts of deep link with Android. Like I said here, always edit project settings, but this time is different. Instead of other settings, you will go to the publishing settings and you will check this box, the custom main manifest. It will create you a file with the name Android manifest.xml under the folder Android that is under the plugins. This folder plugins is responsible for all native code or like a bridge between the OS, native OS and Unity. And always you will find two folders, one iOS, one iOS. There is it, I create manually. And uh, no, in this case, automatically, why? Because I downloaded those two in the machine. So automatically it will create you a plugin. In my case, I just create a new folder on Android. I will reveal it in Finder, reveal in file Finder. So here, open this with Visual Studio Code. This is, this is it. Like you see, you, ha you have two activities. The com.unity 3D player unity play activity and the unity player game activity. You need to add this one. This entity filter. And you have the liberty to add it here below this entity filter or here. For my case, I choose it here. Under the unity player game activities. And this is a view, it's the UI element in Android Native. Here we will make it default and this browsable so it can work in the browser and here is the most important here in the data you need the android scheme so this is what will tell the os to open your app it's like the local host in case of web but in our case of android you need a scheme and here the host is after the scheme it's specific which scene to open the game specifically I will show you in the code which scene I will choose in the start specifically. So we close. You can find this in the, the documentation official website of Unity. It. It's a copy paste. I will open right now the code. So I will go to script. The game object that will hold the script. And be, be aware, don't put your script in a UI element because if you put it in your UI element, it can be destroyed and reloaded and it will create some problem. Always isolated in a game object that is in the scene. So let's open the deep link handler. So here is the script. Like you see, we only import the name, the scene management namespace here in awake. A simple check for deleting any duplicate. People will use the find objects of type, but it's deprecated. So I will. So the new one is by type. You need to pass the reference you want to find it, because we we don't want the duplicate of the same script that hold the deep link logic. So there is it, and the find object source mode is the non. No need to filter by the instance ID. Just we check if there's a duplicate. If we have more than one, we destroy this specific duplicate and we return. So we don't stay stuck here. And here don't destroy and load because like you, you know, the majority of the app of Unity, it will at least have two scenes. Like you see in my game, we have two scenes. And I want user to go to the menu. Don't throw it directly to the game. Excellent. So there is the first. Here in start, we need we need to know if is a cold start or a warm start a cold start it means that the application is never the unity game is never opened or running in the background the warm start that means is already opened or it's Staying in the background running. So in case of the cold start, that means it doesn't exist. We need to check the application dot absolute URL that come with Unity. So if it's empty, that means that the application never happened or opened with deep link. So here we will call this application the handle deep link, the, uh, the handle deep linker. 
and we will pass the parameter string the application absolute UAR so it will store the URL if it's already opened so we will jump this if statement and directly we will call to handle deep linker method and we have this abstract method the deep link activated so this it will help us store the new link it's time we click the button in our react native app so let's explain the hand handle deep linker it needs a parameter the url of the second app that means our unity app in the majority of cases first we will use the system those URA, so we need to extract the ur then the ur it can be composed like this like this one here the scheme that is the android manifest xml like the local host the important that is tell the app it needs to open our calculator game here the path we could call it the path or in majority of cases we call it the host it's still the unity app to begin a process in this specific path in our case like i saw you before this start it will load the menu scene that will come right now here for a more complex scenarios where you need to specific with scene and you can pass like a random ID query that could help you but in our case we don't need it but in your case you can ed uh, need it like if you want to open an app in a specific place so there is this the way so in reality this I don't use it and the query I don't use it but if you want to take the path or to extract the query there is a method and always in lower to avoid the problem so if host that means this part equal to start we will not we will run the scene load scene menu but we need to run a simple check if the current scene is already menu no need to reload the scene it could cause problem but if it's not the menu so that means the game so we load the menu and we return to the menu scene else so that mean an expedited an expedited scenarios so there is the script for the deep link handler like i said i only have two scenes so now we will jump to the react native showing you the code and then we will show you the android how it will work Early this I saw with you in the beginning for iOS work. So now let's go to the React Native. There is the function that will handle the button of AR, augmented reality, like you see, and simple cons with asynchronous. And we have a try cuts block. In the try, we will check if the OS is on road. We need to open this UR scheme, the UR scheme with the host. If it's iOS, the UR type that is already in the info playlist. Then we will use the can open. Like you see here, we have the linking. This one that comes with React Native. But we will find two methods here the can open UR and open UR. Like you see, if you go here, the can open URL is just check if a given URL can be opened without opening it. But in the open URL, it's already try to open the given URL. So here we check if we can open it. If it can be opened, we call this method. This method it take the var value of this variable, send it to the OS, and the OS check if there's an installed application that could be opened with this URL scheme if yes it's open it if uh, uh, false we return an alert that the application is not available or it's not installed so we can push the user to download the application but in advanced scenarios we already will provide in the case of else and link to the app and here is a cut if there's an error with the code so like you see, 
Here. Yesterday I built the Android version. It took me 22 minutes. The command I use it to build a PK file, this one. NPX export on Android, the variant release. It use my emulator. You could use your real Android device if you link it with your USB-C cable. But I use this one that has the 32 API, Android API. And then it generates you an APK. The APK is under build. Here the app. You have the build, the output, APKs, and there is the app release APK. For the case of iOS, this can return you a problem if you use the Expogo app. The problem of, let me go to the app.json, here is it, this one. It will tell you to add this key, the LS application query scheme, to your info playlist. So this problem, what made me to go to archive the game and create an API file. So, so there is it. Uh, then I install it in my phone so I can test with a real, real device. So there is this all the code I made. So let me show you how it will work in the Android. Like you see, there is my Android device. There is the APK of the React Native. So if we go to Profiles, and we click in View AR, automatically it will open the Unity game. There is it. So it's interactable, easy. We can play. You can play, excellent. So there is the deep linking with the React Native and Unity in both iOS and you and Android. So I hope you find this video uh, important and I am open for any question in the comment section and have a good day.